guys, it's Jane. It's Friday today. I'm back here for a Friday Reads. I finished two things this week. I finished Ancillary Mercy by Anne Lucky, the third of the Imperial Ratch trilogy following Ancillary Justice and Ancillary Sword. I really enjoyed this. Um, I've loved this whole uh, series, so it's no surprise that I love the conclusion. Um, Thematically, I think this one is about um, self-determination uh, and specifically about self-determination of AI. So it's a nicely kind of SF sort of twist at the end of the story. There's also some really interesting monkey business with the Presager, the alien race who are um, present in the story in the person of a hilarious character who is the translator for the presages. Um, I, I thought that uh, emotionally this story was really satisfying and um, although for some people the, the conclusion might seem a bit, you know, tied up with a bow, I just thought it was so impressive. It really reminded me of the experience I had um, when watching like the third Toy Story movie. <laughs> I don't know if this makes sense to anybody else, but this is how I felt. In the third Toy Story movie, you get to the point where it looks like everything is going to end badly. And yet it's all pulled out. Uh, in the end, everything kind of comes together and it's the day is saved and it's saved in a way that is actually foreshadowed in the story it's just you didn't notice it and that's how I felt with reading um, Ancillary Mercy it looks as though everything has gone pear-shaped and you can't see how it's going to end well and it ends well in a way that if you had been paying attention to very specific things actually makes sense with the story so it's not like a juice x machine a thing where something is pulled out of nowhere at the last moment to save the day so i really enjoyed it um i can't really say too much about the plot because it's uh, you know a, a, an immediate sequel to the previous two books so go and read ancillary justice and then ancillary sword then ancillary mercy and just have a fine old time now not everybody has loved these books a lot of people have said especially that it's hard to get into them um, and even some people who have read them have just found them uh, unsatisfying particularly the world building um, is done suggestively rather than exhaustively but um, that for me is a plus. For mine, there was enough detail in this for it to make sense. Um, in, I understand what what the um, concern is because there are some books that I've read that I've got right to the very end and I've gone, I just, I, I don't have a picture in my head. This didn't, just never fell together for me. But that was not the case with The Imperial Wretch for me. I really enjoyed it. The other one that I finished this week was uh, Neil Stevenson's The Confusion, which is the second in his Baroque cycle. Uh, at the end of the first, Jack and Eliza are separated in this kind of traumatic way, um, emotionally resonant traumatic way. And the story in The Confusion is in two sections and we kind of break from one sort of storyline to the other. And one is in general following Eliza and Eliza's exploits. The other one is following Jack and Jack's exploits. Um, Eliza initially is part of the court in Versailles, initially as a servant, and then she's kind of made a countess. And by about halfway through the story, she becomes a duchess. And then things become even more complicated. And there's she's doing money transactions for different people and she's kind of acting as a spy and and um, King Louis has got her under the thumb or has he and yeah there's all sorts of stuff back and forth she also gets married and has children and because there's a number of years that this book um, covers she continues her interactions with natural philosophers so they don't get completely lost out of the story um, but the second one the confusion is lots more about politics and Jack and Eliza Jack's story is even more extraordinary he um, basically the story opens and he's a slave he's been captured by the Barbary Corsairs and um, 
he starts off as a slave and the, he meets a whole bunch of other folk in Algiers who are slaves and then they come up with the plan and the plan sees them traveling halfway around the world and double crossing all sorts of people they have uh, for a while Jack is a king in India um, and uh, then we end up in South America for a while uh, they're prisoners of the Inquisition in South America then they finally make their way out of there that drama and then they're captured again at the final moment and um, and in the at the end of this story, um, Jack finally gets back to England, which is where you know his story began. Um, and yet it's not over by a long shot. So there is still a lot of running in this story to go, the whole third volume. And um, I've just I so enjoyed rereading these books. Um, I remember that the first time I read these books, they were quite hard work because there's just so many characters and different things going on. But coming back to them, I'm just I'm just loving it. I'm lapping it up. It's just a real comfort read for me. So after finishing The Confusion, I've gone on to Cameron Hurley's Infidel, which is the follow-up to God's War. And uh, this is set six years after the end of God's War. And Nix's team have gone the way of all things and gone to the winds. And most of the team have settled down into other sort of forms of life. Nix, she's got a new, smaller team and she's sort of kind of an older, slower, washed up-ish, nearly at the end of her kind of career as the story begins. And then the Beldames attack the Queen and Nix is caught in the middle and drama ensues. And part of that drama means her kind of hooking up again with lots of the people from her old team. So I'm really enjoying this one as well. When I get to the end of uh, Infidel, um, depending on exactly how poorly I'm feeling, <laughs> it's been a long week. <laughs> I've not been at all well this week, which is part of the reason I've enjoyed the Neil Stevenson reread so much. So depending how well I'm feeling, I might tackle a new book. I've got a couple. Um, I've got uh, a copy of... A Long Way to the Small Angry Planet, is that, am I saying that right? Um, I've got a copy of that to read. I've got something else as well, but I may just end up reading the third of the Baroque books, which is called The System of the World. Or maybe I'll hang on to that for a little while and keep it up my sleeve for another week when I'm feeling terrible. <laughs> um, but yeah, that's it for me. Um, I've got to get out of here because... It's uh, going to be a long day. I'm sorry the light's not so great, but it's um, it's early in the morning here. I'm filming it. I've got a lot of stuff I have to do today. Um, I've got a hospital appointment and I've got to go shopping for clothes. <laughs> I've got We've got a kind of quasi fancy dinner that we're going to tonight, my husband and I, and I've been dreading it for weeks because I've got nothing to wear. And yesterday, uh, when I was sick all day, yesterday, David's going, why don't you go out tomorrow and buy yourself a new dress? Like he thought that would make me feel better. Because <laughs> that's exactly what I want to do. Go out and buy a bigger dress. I, I'm just going to have a mini rant now. I've never in my entire life looked like a pregnant woman. Even when I'm like nine months pregnant, I just look fat, <laughs> fatter than usual. Um, I had a my first hospital appointment early at the beginning of the week and um, in the waiting room there's all these people with the beautiful kind of, you know, pregnant lady outline and there was one in particular who looked like she could have been a model with the kind of beautiful baby bump sort of silhouette thing going on and um, I just overheard a conversation that she was having with the reception and she was only like two weeks further on than me and I'm going this is just this is just not fair it's not fair you just look at me and you think that well, that girl has just let herself go <laughs> at the all you can eat part.
<laughs> and the truth be told, I've hardly been able to keep down a single thing for the past month. <sighs> so anyway, I'm going shopping for a dress <laughs> today. Oh! Which is, you know, fantastic at the best of times. But anyway, there's that. Feeling a little bit sorry for myself. And yes, then I'm going for an ultrasound, which hopefully will be nice. <sighs> anyway, why don't you tell me what you're up to today or what you're doing on the weekend or what you're reading at the moment. Um, I'd love to hear about nice things that people are doing. I hope you're all well and I'll talk to you later. Bye.